Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Motive to be Productive. I'm Dario, your host, and today I'm honored to be hosting Chef Hans Zare, Executive Chef of Bon Appetit Management Company at Google. Chef Zare, thank you so much for accepting my invitation and welcome to our show. How are you doing today, sir? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it and um, we're going to have fun. Let's share some information with you, uh, with you, you and your audience. I appreciate it. I, and, I'm, and I'm very looking forward to it. And I'm sure our audience are as well, but still they don't know. And they'll be surprised and happy. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And I wanted to uh, start with your passion for food and culinary arts and cooking. So what made you interested in pursuing a career in the culinary arts? Uh, see, it's a very uh, big question to answer because it can be a book to write about this. But in the short and sweet, we are a human being. We, whatever we do in life is an art, form of art. You do carpentry, you do plumbing. It can be necessary for work or it can be, a, you can twist it something around, make it hanging somewhere, make an artwork out of it. So anything in life is art, piece of art. Even nature is art. So, but the point is when we find something make us happy, make your heart happy. And that's one angle we can look at it. And also to find the position, um, especially for us Iranian, how you don't depend on what your parents or family or the relative wants you be. You want to be yourself. So, um, of course, uh, 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 we grow up with the sound and the smell and uh, you know and the music and food. Eating is not necessary, but uh, also we find somehow in our life we find that food is art, an art. It's it is art, and and it's also the chemistry. It's a science. It's in the human nature and uh, why I say science, if you don't know what you're doing, you can make yourself sick or you can make yourself stronger. So these are all behind the uh, uh, hiding behind just we sit there and just eat, shuffle the food in our, our butt, which is necessary to, to, for, uh, to our survival. But in, behind that, there are lots of reasons. So for me, as a, like anybody else, of all my life, I was lucky enough to grow up in a family that they were not uh, pushed us or the, to what they want us to be. They let us to be what we want to be, but they stay behind us as a pillar. So they were there to encourage us and support us, but not influence our, our decision. So, and um, to be honest, you know, I always liked the food, but also it wasn't like I was a, there was a word, shekamu, means you eat a lot, a uh, foodie. I liked as a, as a kid, I always like to test the food. A little bit of it, I know we have a tendency to eat a lot. I, I, even though for my age and um, always I was bigger and taller than my age and people expect I eat too much, way too much, but I never did that. It's still, I don't do it for, so, but I enjoyed it. So that was as a childhood, uh, uh, it's kind of grow with me to test the food. And to be honest with you, I never thought I would be a chef because it wasn't in my mind. And the first was the soccer was in my life. I play a lot of sports uh, from volleyball, ping pong, everything. And also I was good in the in a school, math. And my I always wanted to go to behind this math. But then when I got to high school, science got to me that uh, what is behind the, this human body, brain, and heart that makes us the whole universe circles you know, around it. So it's just fascinating. So I decided to just go for that. And um, of course, uh, I'm making a short story. When I came to the United States, I went to pre-med. I was a UC Davis student, biochemistry, microbiology major. And my goal was to become a brain surgeon, not just to practice as a surgeon, do a research about brain. Right now we have this old technology, social media, everything, we have computers. Compared to brains, our brain is nothing. It's nothing, not even one billion of our brain. So it was fascinating for me to do that one. But parallel to that one, the life you're going to, uh, uh, your body, your hormones, your in, uh, surrounding, your environment affects on you to change. Sometimes it unknowingly forces you. 
sometimes it's by accident you find your passion. So mine was all combination. It was from uh, uh, passions find it and also uh, as a necessity of survival in the United States that when I came to the United States, it was the only thing that I could be able to learn and I had a reason in, to make a living to in the United States to be able to support myself going to school. And that happened. My Luckily, my brother owned the restaurant, so I started working there as a, a busboy and dishwasher. So another thing I want to bring it up for your audience is a uh, I grew up in a family, we used to call it in a Farsi, car or nis, means whatever you do, every job has own respect. And uh, you cannot discriminate, you cannot, you know, every, every, in it, we need everybody's job. You have to respect. It's title mean nothing. Thank, thank you for bringing this up because in some of the traditional cultures, such as our own, a lot of families still believe that car it might be an r very which is a which is the wrong mindset unfortunately and also they want their children to pursue whatever career they themselves have so what is what is your advice to those families what would you say to them well be, to be honest with your parents they have a right um uh, uh, intentions, but that doesn't mean you can push the kids. You know, you give the advice, but you have no rights from the childhood to push those to one narrative. You want to let them to learn everything, let them to find their, like if you see your kid is very into the uh, uh, painting, let them to paint. Encourage them while painting to do piano, play tennis. So all these, eventually these, when they become 18, 19, 20, they're going to choose their own path. At least they have some knowledge of it. Not without, like, you, for example, you push to be a, you're going to go become a doctor. No, it's no soccer, no painting, no music, nothing. They force you, you're under the family rules. And by the time you go to university, then you're over 18, 20, and you get a little bit, little, uh, you know, you can say something, you can stay in front of your family, kind of. And then you say, okay, I want to go for something else that I love. But you have no background on that one. You have to start all over again. In that case, the parents are not doing the right thing for their kids. So give as much as, especially young, when you're young age, you can learn everything faster. So like languages, you can learn more languages when you are three, four, five years old than 20, 18. You know? So rather than forcing one dimension of your kids trying to have four, five, six different area, have them to learn. Eventually, they pick the one they like it in the future, and they have a background knowledge. So that's unfortunately, we haven't been thought, uh, taught in Iran, and it's still, but it's, it's, things are changing, social media and the life changing. Ever since uh, in the past 20, 30 years with the social media and access to other uh, culture and seeing what's going on with uh, you know, everybody. Yeah, that's a different complex subject. We're going to talk later about the food. It's uh, rather than being bombarded with the government uh, control media, not just I'm talking about Iran, I'm talking about US too. Used to be all you get your information from Fox and CBS, whatever, or as a, again, I'm going to relate it to food. Like if I want to get review, if they know that I'm Persian, there's food racism, they're not going to give me as much as, uh, coverage that they give it to an American. So I, that was Fox, that was CBS, ABC, they have a control and nobody could say anything. But right now with the social media, I have a, a lot of platforms to PR myself or other people. That's what happened. So the times that has changed, for not just for every aspect. So I, I want to tie up those things together. So right now the parents are, but of course, uh, it, the problem of the whole society is education. I mean, you have education, and these things wouldn't happen. But unfortunately, again, in Iran, most of the people, they were kind of, they didn't have a good life. They want to push their kids to become a doctor and engineering or the lawyer. They have a better life. They thought it being a doctor and money maker and they're going to have a better life. But they didn't know that they can be artists and they can be successful artists. If they have a talent, they can be singer. So it was a misinformation, but it has been changed. Exactly. And as you mentioned, social media has enabled everyone, most, mostly everyone, to 
have the ability to access information, which I'm going to ask about you, about your social media later. But before that, I wanted to ask you about your, um, you mentioned that you studied uh, microbiology at UC Davis, but then you changed directions and, and pursued the culinary arts. A lot I see, because I'm a student myself, and I see a lot of students that they're studying something or even they're not sure what they want to do and they fear to pursue another career in addition to what they're doing, meaning that they're afraid to change. So, uh, so what sh how, how should they react to this? What is, what is your thought on this? Well, it's a great question. Is that, you know, for me, we are human, we make mistakes. You learn from right. mistakes. So changes are good. Look at the whole uh, nature. Everything changes. If you don't change, you spoil. You don't, you know, you have, like, look at where a butterfly comes from. How many times changes become that beautiful butterfly? So uh, for me, you can see it in the, in the United States. There are people like 40, 50 years old, they change a career. From like uh, engineering, they go dentistry. You know, I have a friend that he, uh, he was a, in the uh, uh, engineering department and decided to go to become an a, a orthodontist, you know, and he became a successful one. And at age of 40, so there is no limit what age you can change your career as long as, this is the bottom line I can say, you're gonna live once, not twice. So be best live for yourself happily with the bite of uh, uh, the bread and the uh, butter and cheese or love, it doesn't matter. As long as you, what you put your mouth, your life, in your heart, it makes you happy. Everybody has their own happiness. So life is once, not twice. You cannot, for any price, any money, you can buy a second pass. That's gone. And we're not going to go back. We're going forward. So whatever you do, at the end of the day, at night, you sit there with yourself. Be happy what you have. If you don't do right, say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to make it better. So back to uh, the question is a. Uh, when I came to United States as a foreigner and an in Iranian, and it was a tough timing, no social media, and a lot of change. Like I always tell the young generation, be appreciated of what the older generation has established for you. And it's not a, 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 to brag about it or in a farce, we say, men net bezaran. This is a great. Right. We came to United States, the roads were dirty, muddy roads for us. We used to, like, when they came to um, No Rules, Two months before the Persian New Year, we used to wait until to see a box of a delivery comes from Iran and there's a, a nut and a special gifts for us from Iran. And we used to write a letter. It took a two weeks, two weeks to get there and two weeks to come back. It wasn't like telephone. It was too expensive. So, or you couldn't even celebrate because it was after a hostage crisis and they were not potential. So, so it was a tough time. And, but right now, uh, like, uh, this is a great subject. I can share it. I was invited to go to the university, uh, do Davis for uh, a money uh, celebration. And there were 500 Iranians celebrating with another American, other culture. Amazing. And amazing. Dean of the school was there, Davis. So I was sitting there and having a good time. And I went to, uh, because of one of the famous singer's daughter took me there with his da da uh, daughter. So I appreciate that they were, and anyway, suddenly uh, this uh, lady who was the head of the group talking about that how sad she is. She didn't, she couldn't go to Iran to visit her parents, but she was Skyping every day. How? Uh, so and then I'm like, come on, at least be happy you're Skyping. That, you know. Exactly. But then my name came up because I am usually, you know, I I can talk, but when I put on the spontaneously uh, uh, situation, I get a little uncomfortable. My name came to go to say something. So I wasn't prepared or whatever. And I went there and said, you know what? I have nothing to say except one thing, you know, miss, you should be very, very happy. That scribe you have, I didn't have that one. I was wishing to even hear my dad, my mom's voice, my sister's voice that I couldn't. I couldn't sit with my friends, celebrate or say I am Iranian because I was afraid that they're going to hurt me at the time. But right now, look at you. You are scribe with your parents. You are in front of the dean of the University of Davis. You are partying. Celebration of no rules. This is the celebration of the happiness, not sadness. So don't be upset that you couldn't go to Iran. So, and then after me, dean of the school supposed to make a speech, she came, she said, you know what? I, can, I have nothing to say. Whatever I want to say, 
Mrs. R say that one. So this is the reality. And um, so everything slowly became better and better for Iranian and the social media was what a punchline. So brought us to, not just for Iranian culture, every culture to be able to show the hospitality, culture, beauty, and basically separate the people from politics, the religion and everything. So show the real people's life. And that's what for me is the social media. It was good. There's some bad part of a social media too, but you right. take it both, you know, but it was a, without social media, we wouldn't be here right now talk about the Iranian diaspora, Iranian food culture, why I couldn't even uh, teach the lecture for the Iranian food with Stanford kids or the, uh, the new one is coming to another university we're working on it, it's gonna be the news. So these are all based on the social media and hard work of the older generation and young generation like yourself, that you have so much care about culture, you're doing the platforms like this, you wanna teach your, your, on your own age, non-Iranian, Iranian, that are born here and non-Iranian that they know more about you by knowing what I have been suffered to make this happen right now. And they will appreciate exactly. the culture because they know about the Italian, they know about the French, they know about the Japanese, but they don't know about Iranian except that Iranians are, why fuck, again, we're not talking about this, I don't want to talk about politics as a terrorist, we marked it. But right now they see that Iranian immigration, um, uh, people they migrated here, not migrate, what's the word I'm looking? Like moved here, just to make yeah, this simple? Came, they all came here with a high education purpose. They didn't care yes. for opportunity. And they're all successful from everything they do, Silicon Valley, every company. And they're the most successful immigrant in the United States are Iranian. But yes. still we don't get it, still to this day, we don't get the respect for that. Well, that's, that's we because of... There. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. But uh, as you said, um, the social media has enabled people to learn about different cultures without the filters, which I wanted to ask you about this because on your platform, um, on your Instagram platform, you are you're very active and you, you show the Iranian culture to the world and that's very admirable. And we, we really appreciate it because what you're doing is not only showing the Iranian cuisine, but also the Iranian culture and Iranian sites, the beautiful sites that even I haven't visited, you know, as, as an Iranian. I'm, I'm from the South, you're from the North. And so it's very interesting. And I wanted to ask you about your platform that what inspired you to do this and, um, why did you decide to even do this and, and show the culture as well in, in addition to food? See, uh, you cannot separate the food and culture. They are, you know, the only way you can teach the, uh, about food you have to bring the culture. They are like perfect marriage. You, if you separate one, you're not going to be successful. Same as culture. That's one of the also we have been being a little behind. Unfortunately, our platform, like a, a, a festival, they always, they do the culture, they don't include the food. Food is just the grab and the rice and kebab. They haven't done that. Well, still, they are not getting it. Unfortunately, I can complain about that uh, because they are separating the culture without it. Food is culture, culture is food. If you bring it this together, you're going to be successful. This is right now at the beginning, but let's go a little uh, backward, rewind the back. My whole thing uh, being a chef was a uh, passion. From the beginning, I find a long story. I'm not going to go there. I've, I started as a making the money and then became a passion. And that passion took me to quit the school to go pursue my career. And I worked very hard for it. It wasn't like that's another chapter to talk about that young generation. These days, they think that uh, the question comes here, Mr. Zaya, how I can be in the shortest time and less expensive become a famous chef? And this is the, um, it's uh, not just being chef in any business. Everybody thinks that everything you can come to get overnight. No, you have to pay your dues. You have to learn your crafts and everything. So 
working in a restaurant and learning at the time, again, it wasn't a portrait for me. And I knew Persian food, I cook at home, I ate, but I was an expertise. And still, I'm not. I'm still learning. To this day, I'm learning Iranian food. But every time I go to Iran, I go to Iran Gadi. I go means tour the Iran. And I want to learn. Every day I am doing research and I'm going to different sites. I'm trying to find the study about the regional food of Iran. So, but at the time, I go, my goal was to learn the craft, basic cooking. Okay. So when you want to learn the basic cooking, it's unfortunately right now we are fig figuring out. No, it's a respect, but no complaint. But uh, everything dominated by the French cuisine. Like, for example, why the modern size, five, six modern size has to be a French to be in the school, which doesn't apply to Persian food, doesn't apply to Japanese food, doesn't apply to Indonesian food. You know what I mean? Every culture has a, so why you have to judge my food by French uh, technique? Every culture has own technique. So that's different completely we're gonna put aside. We call food racism, which is still happening big time. So it's changing slowly. We are working on it and that's gonna be to the time. So first my thing was to learn the craft how to cook. And my nickname was the chef with four eyes because every time I was doing my thing, I was looking at the chef, at my chefs and how they're doing it to so learn it. So anytime they had to go to the bathroom or to go uh, off the line, I used to plate their dishes and they came to wow, why you did it. So that's how I pushed myself to learn the. So when you learn the whole this crap, then we have a word uh, in perversion or the beda nawazi in the music. But that's exactly, you can use it in a food, in, food to cooking. If you don't know the ingredients, flavor, basically, you cannot make your own dishes. So you have to learn the craft first, then you can come create the food. So that's another subject. The major thing is we have Iran, and if you look at Iran, geographically, it's a big area. It's almost half of Europe. You're talking about from the north to south. You can have snow in the north, you can have a nice 70, 80 degrees in the south. So, and the climate and ingredients are completely different. They are beautiful, luscious, beautiful vegetables and the wild fruits, wild nuts everywhere there. So we have the food because of Silk Road past there. So I'm trying to be in a big subject in a short, I don't want to take too much of time, bring it and narrow it down. Recipes you see like a gourmet sabzi in Tabriz make with the black eye peas, in Tehran with the uh, uh, red beans, kidney beans. There's more er uh, which, uh, herbs in the uh, Tehranian gourmet sabzi versus Tabriz that has a less more bean. Or every other dishes, like I put under my uh, Instagram, a dish in the similar one in that other cities everywhere. It's been all incorporated, but everybody by necessity of what available, uh, no. Question comes here, is okay this recipe? Of course, my question for the people, they always complain that do the authentic Iranian food. What is the definition of the authentic food? There's no definition. That's it's my been, question as well. Yeah, yeah. It's not, the recipes make, make like boil on the meat. Then they make a broth, make it eshkane or bush or the, the juice, eat it, and the meat in the own Excellent. fat sauteed, put in a uh, container with the fat and preserve it. That was called gourmet, gourma, or uh, in a Turkish. That's the same as braising. So, so far as a chef, I have been trained how to braise the meat, French style. But right now, I am trying to show that no, before you in the Iran, we used to do gourma, gourmet, and the, how we braise it, and also didn't need a the refrigerator. They were in the uh, underground, they were holding it for the winter. So, no, what's the Iranian recipes? It's been like a not documented for a long time ago. Pinch up this, pinch up that, right? We all relate that word, a pinch up the yes. mom, grandma's, mom, mom, or grandma, how much? You, just pinch up that, but my pinch is different than your pinch. Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. There is the, or that also, maybe one day you don't have one of the spice or uh, herb, you put something else. So every dish, even the same person makes same dish is not going to be the same. So that for me is the, uh, not the authentic, it's changing. Like my sister, I have six sisters, they make the same dish that my mom showed them differently. So imagine how in generation has been changed. So food evolves. And also they say, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking at? Um, um, I'm blank for a second. Uh, uh, That's okay. Uh, What's the innovation? Infusion, 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 infusion uh, 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 confusion. 
that's the biggest bad long mistake because let's talk about Iranian food. When was the Iranian food infused by tomatoes and potatoes? Not even 150, 200 years ago with a god jar and then Christoph Columbus brought it from South America. We didn't have a potato. We didn't have a tomatoes. We, it is a tomato paste. We had a beautiful barberry paste, pomegranate paste, a, a plum paste, all the stuff, citrus, we used to use that one, or tamarind. Then tomatoes replace it. So why you accept 150, 200 years ago, the infusion of tomato and potato, which, which is in your abgush, main dishes, everything. Now, if some one young chef trying to be a beautiful dishes of Iranian, and you're going to say you are fusion, you are confusion. That's it. But that's changing too. We did, again, this uh, whole platform of the Instagram with this great chef. We have a friends. We're talking. And a lot of young generation of Iran, I get messages that thank you very much for being vocal about it. Now we can even, they cannot talk to us in Iran, let us down. When they say you cannot do that, but yes, we can. We have a mentors that, not just me, another chef, they doing that one. So it's been lifted that heavy pressure, which is great. I'm so happy to see what happened in, especially, okay, I hate coronavirus, right? But there's one thing good happened from coronavirus. People start to cooking, start respecting the food, start going back to their heritages and listening. And, and then somebody asked me, Hoss, what do you think about this? Everybody's big young Iranian blogger. I said, good for them. Let it be. If they do wrong or right, it's good for it. If they do wrong, they learn the right way. From your actresses, from the uh, singers, they all right now they have a cooking. And then good for them, good for the culture. You know what I mean? But in the same token, I lead to some basic people to watch them. But when they come technicality, they can come to us chefs, to what we are doing next level. Like uh, uh, I saw today, uh, it was, uh, I laughed, but then I said, you know what? It's okay in Iran, this chef doing a, a, a classes of the sauces, mother sauces and everything, salsa, and they all French cuisine. I'm like, wait a minute, this is wrong. You are not, because you can take the galamahi sauce, make it separate, cool it up, make it dressing for salad with the megu and kahu. You can make it beautiful Amazing. dressing. Amazing. You can, you can do the uh, fessin jun dressing. I make it in my salad, the blood orange and persimmon, pomegranate. You can make it delicious. Or there are any dishes we have, um, we used to do because of the economically and time in one pot dishes. But if you're the construct of these dishes, you can take the meat away, substitute another meat or fish, whatever, with minor changes. For, for example, how I, if I tell you, we couple changes, I can make the Koresh game a best Koresh for the fish. You know why? Because that's it. My mouth's getting water when I talk about food. <laughs> that's citrus factor of game with the lima amani. That's perfect for the fish. Fish, we always say acid, acid, acid. And game is the acid all there. But right now they accept it. But before, no, 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 it has to be meat. So platform of social media has been going very well, wrong or right. And unfortunately, everybody's right now there, like a handful of dishes we have bombarded with that. Cuckoo have the gourmet have the, but like today I put it on my uh, Instagram that I had put, uh, posted before too. It was a great technique. I, I, I kind of, not a game, it was fun. I put the rice pilaf. I said with two additional ingredients, that can be a great dinner or not. What you will add it. It can be a recipe for everybody for eat for a month. So some people didn't get the message. They were saying, I didn't mean that one. Traditional, I mean, traditional. Two simple things. Uh, for me, fried egg and yogurt, for example, or sumac. So some simple thing. My idea was that to teach the people, we start with simple. Like a, if we are playing music band, if you won, you make a mistake, you made a mistake. You are on your own. Two, your chance of mistake become twice. Three pieces become three times, right? You yes. Play. So but when you have three ingredients, you're not going to screw up that one that much. So that's what I was trying to dishes show them also. But when you go to the 40, 50 piece of band orchestra, you can really easily ruin the music, but depends on the conductor and practice. They bring the old music together. So when you cook in, you are conductor, chef the conductor. You have to bring the harmony of the food together. So I was trying to uh, kind of, kind of almost 
unknowing to teach the, my audience like simple start. And then after that, today I post a video that simple rice I made with the milk, which is we call it milk and rice cooked with the, some nuts and chicken. So I should, so, but that's at the beginning, if I want to teach that one, they're not going to be followed. They're going to ruin it. But first step by step, like that. that's about beauty of the food. Learn it slowly, this one step, don't rush it. And then eventually become a conductor, composer. That's the, it doesn't come overnight. It, it takes a while. But unfortunately, what we, we, in everybody, especially Iranian, we don't have a patience for that. We want to overnight become famous. And again, uh, but also sometimes it's not their fault. They have some misinformation they're getting from, uh, again, I don't want this subject become Iran. Unfortunately, there's so many stuff happen in Iranian culture when it came to Rus. There's revolution happened in Iranian restaurant situation in the past 15 years. Because there were not many restaurants like the way it is right now. It was only Sero Kababi. But right now you see a lot of restaurant mod. But almost and they were successful was decor. All money goes to decor, but nothing for service and nothing service. for food, food. So as much as they spend time on a coffee, coffee became, uh, uh, barista stretch became amazing. They would have focused on the food, food would be amazing. And also another uh, wrong way that we tend to say have a, See the neighbor's uh, grass is greener. Now we are looking for the Italian food, Asian food, Turkish food, Turkey from Turkey. And we forget about how delicious recipes we have in Iran. They can play around it, make it beautiful. Now one of the dishes I see most of the bloggers and the chefs playing around is the uh, 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 What's the mahi? Simple. Cipino. See if the stew here they do it for tomato sauce in Iran is basically with the cilantro or the uh, uh, fenugreek with tamarind, right? No, it's I see that beautiful. They make a sauce and they put a fish on top, more elegant. So that's okay. You can do that one with the fish and June too. That the, I saw some, I but the thing that for me is fun at the time, it wasn't as much of pop, it was popular, but it wasn't as strong right now. I've been doing this for the past 15 years. If you look at, I, I, okay, I give you away the secrets. Most of the dishes I put the pictures right now, all these creative dishes I put on my Instagram, they are all from 10, 8, 10, 15 years ago from my restaurant. I'm not making it right now. I was served them and I put it in public and I got amazing response. And I started that one. If I had the same platform right now at the time, it would be. Boom. Boom. Amazing. But I did my job. So again, I want to relate that one why I brought that one. I did my best at my restaurants. But again, when you do restaurant, you interaction, media, I got whatever I wanted. TV, media, everything. And I always brag, like when I had a food and wine magazine writing about, I gave it up to Kiyosh. When the uh, USA Today wants to write about me, I gave the Jagash. I think I could make a fancy dishes show off. No, I Still stuck my stick with my culture, trying to brag about to it. the culture, yeah. correct? Exactly, culture. I was with the food. I was trying to show the culture and the street food. But the most important that you ask, you're gonna. I know you're gonna ask me. I want to give you the hint. I'm coming there. I noticed that restaurant becoming too small for me. What I can offer, how I can introduce the food, and I didn't get any response approaching with this old organization. They doing a food festival. They nice. were almost uh, preaching to wrong ears. They were all, give them music, they dance, close, and everything show off. That was all about it. Food was okay, buffet style, put the over there secondary. And I was trying to find, I came with the opportunity, work, I, I, well, I, of course, after 30 years, I decided to go Iran, going back and forth, in you know, three years, I went 10 times. To, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Uh, to, to learn about food too. Not that's just my family party. It was family and uh, learning. But then I sold my restaurant and I worked with the opportunity why I knew that's coming to my way. I, I, it was planned. I start traveling with a uh, Bon Appetit management company to in the United States, over 10 uh, states. I went there. We did a book together, recipes. I thought uh, uh, Iranian culinary for the American chefs, about 500 chefs in the complete and we went to universities like uh, Harvard, we went to John Hopkins uh, University, a lot of major players, and they were learning. And the, for me, it was fascinating because 
so far they were, these are the chefs that have intimidated me that they know more of her. This time, it was my turn to intimidate them because they didn't know a lot of ingredients, like uh, barberries, how to, the uh, sour grapes, pickled sour, and at the beginning, they were all nervous. But when they start cooking one hour after, and I always brought the, like, for example, I give you, this is a fun for your audience. You know, when I was trying to give them a dolma, to make a dolma, you know, it can be boring. You're going to pack it over. I told them the reason we make a dolma, it's supposed to be gossip. All these Iranian ladies, when they were home, they used to get neighbors. They all brought a pot. They put it in the middle of the table and they talk, they talk about everything and they fold the dolma. And every awesome. dolma has a one gossip in it. So you guys, every time you wanted to break from your station, you, you want to talk to your friend, don't go outside. Go in that table, fold some dolma. And, and gossip about and it. Gossip, talk about me, talk about food, whatever. whatever. And that was big laughter. So <laughs> I, that was how I tend to be the joy of culture, teaching them food. And then um, also the ingredient. And then one hour later, it smelled out the kitchen. They were like, chef, this smells good. And they were all amazing. And then at the end, we used to put their food on the table to eat. And of course, they become chef, they're polite. So they come, they take a picture and they take a small amount, they go sit there. After they finish, I could see their face. They are just very upset. They want more, right? They want more, but they are, they are polite. So I'm like, you guys, like exactly what? You guys are insulted me today. I am not happy. They're like, chef, <laughs> what? what we did? What? I said, in our culture, if you don't go to the table twice, you, that means you didn't like your food. You insulted the host. This is the hard big work. It was an attack, laughter. So I broke the ice there too. So at the end, what I got from Chef was, number one, thank you, Chef, for teaching us something we didn't know that. Flavors, milk, and everything. It wasn't their fault because, again, food racism and culture that it was all pushed away. Two, Correct. with the culture, they noticed that how fun we have. What's our culture? It's not like, a, you know, we encourage people to eat. They don't be shy. They don't have to be shy about that or politely. No, you have to go. We have a culture, say that one. If you don't eat my food twice, you're going to be insulting the host. So it was a lot of experience and uh, uh, teaching them ingredients and recipe and everything. And what happened was, again, how popular these chefs, they make, start incorporating these dishes in their daily menus. Maybe not exactly, but similar. Like first time I got a phone call from Portland that this chef did it in one day, 800 pieces of small pieces of barberry bread, and they use it as a, a, a flatbread. They topped it with the mushroom and cheese, pizza style, and but it was barberry. But again, they didn't, first they used it like a bread, flatbread of Iranian bread, and then they start using the name, so teach the people. So my goal was like, how I can make that one? No, not back to, then after I finished here and have my travel in the United States, then it was next phase that company uh, uh, bon Appetit at Google wants me to go there. So I did one class and they would go, went away crazy and they want me to work with them. I said, no, I'm going to live in Iran. So anyway, long story short, I went to Iran six months. Uh, it was beautiful, but as a, living in the United States for 35 years, it's hard to you get used to it. I don't have it. I just want to, don't have it. If, what if that if it's gone, came back right away, Google grabbed me. No, there is like choose to be work at a corporate, my first corporate job. Never. I always own the restaurant. This is the deal. You go as Iranian to London. You're walking around. You see a American food, hamburger. Yes. You see Burmese. You see African food. Yes. Australian food. Which one more likely you're going to go? You're going to go the one you are comfortable. You know it, right? You're not going to take a chance. You're hungry. So our food, Iranian food, most of our other than Iranians are uncomfortable. They don't know. They, they're going to say, oh, Iranian, we never had it. They're going to go somewhere else. But exactly. at my work, I'm not going to go to numbers. If I can feed, which I am doing more than that, I'm not going to go to numbers. 10,000 million Persian Iranian food every day is not brag about the, I serve 10,000 meal a day. If these people, they ate the food, some of the Iranians, some of them from India and some other culture, Next time they, with their family, they travel, when they see, they see Iranian food, oh, let's go try. I know the food is good. And they're going to go support Iranian businesses, restaurants. So that's what happened. Demand become uh, more and then more Iranian restaurants offer and more restaurants offer, more cultures introduce. You know, that's what that's I was going to ask you about exactly that without going into the details, how has your experience working at Google 
magnified the introduction of the uh, Persian cuisine, the Iranian food to the world, which you explained it perfectly. And I hope, honestly, this continues this the streak to other to other chefs to other even even people like me who I wanted to like be honest here yeah, I I've because you mentioned that people have started to cook when this COVID pandemic start started and I wanted to say exactly that's the thing that happened to me as well I've become interested in learning about cooking as well and food and it was it was very relatable and and amazing and thank you thank you so much for sharing about that yeah i wanted to ask you about covid and okay. i'm talking about before you go covid i want to add one more it's very important subject about i appreciate it thank you older. it it wasn't just the iranian food i want to introduce i want to introduce why iranian foods are good iranian food if you take a meat or whey protein, it's 100% vegetarian and vegan. Plant forward, which is why now you hear about plant forward. Plant forward dishes. Everything we make, like I make the uh, chodesh, uh, the stew of the, uh, um, the okra, right? It's very popular, tomato okra. In of meat, I use it like eggplant. Why? Because I want to keep it vegan. And of course, some Iranians say, this is, we never put eggplant. I say, yes, but this is for vegan, not for the meat one over there. So they realized that, okay, I'm trying to cater to everybody. So it was a using the platform, show how flexible, how these dishes we have can be everything made even vegan and then transfer to the meat, gluten-free, or uh, like what I put 10 ashes on the menu and they're all healthy, that basically without meat. So your body needs 55, 85 grams of the uh, protein. And you get it from vegetables and these glooms and uh, legumes and uh, grains. You don't even need a protein. So the idea was teaching them, okay, these people, they brought um, California cuisine. No, we grew up with the California cuisine. Farm table is nothing new for me. We eat in the morning. My mom, my sister, they go pick up the herb that picked that night from the farm and bring it, cook it there. You in U.S. became a frozen and canned food production for a long time. Now you use the chef system to change it. So that doesn't mean I was like you. No, we grew up with a farm table. <laughs> so I was trying to tell mm-hmm. Iranian foods are healthy. A lot of spices, not spicy. This is another subject. We, our food is not spi- uh, as a heat is not spicy, but it's spices. We use a lot of spices, flavors. So when I like spicy food, but when I say I like spicy food, not as a heat as it spices. That's a two thing we have separate. Okay, about next Amazing. question. Amazing. So, so, first of all, all of this is amazing and I, and I really appreciate it because there have been a lot of great information and I'm sure our audience will appreciate it. So thank you for that. And going to my final question subject is, is coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, this time has been very difficult for a lot of as everybody, everybody, especially the younger generation, such as myself, and they've been struggling. And um, honestly, I just wanted to ask your advice, as you know, as as a successful person, as a disciplined person, as a determined individual, to give your advice about to the younger generation, especially about how to overcome this. I know we're at the end of the pandemic, but in, in, a, in another way, we're not at the end wow. still. It's, it's still, we have the vaccine time. It's still going to take time. So I, I really appreciate if you uh, give your advice yeah. to, the gen- to the younger generation. It's not over yet. It's not gonna be over. This was a wake up call for as a human being to hygiene, because we were not taking the hygiene seriously in general. So I'm glad this happened. So not, I don't, that's the wrong word to say, but it was a wake up call for all of us to learn about how to be hygiene, how to take care of ourselves, how to be kind to each other, and also bring it back to old lifestyle. How beautiful is it with the family? You can sit down and actually have a dinner with your wife and kids, your sister, your brother, you cook at home to enjoy. For me, is cooking is a meditation. And I always tell the people, 
When you want to cook in the kitchen, don't tell I'm going to cook, you're going to wash dishes, you're going to clean the table. No. It's like a tango. You want to cook together. You want to wash it together. You got, because you want to learn how to work. Like in the kitchen, we work in a professional kitchen. We don't say, I'm going to stand here. I just wash it. We work around each other. That's like a rhythm of music. That should be, a, and it should be the same as at home. It brings the closeness that how we can be around each other, enjoy the energy of each other. Just imagine you are in the kitchen with your mom cooking and you're around snacking or doing something. That brings the closeness. The energy. So that one thing was I was very happy to. Two, the most thing about young generation is this is the deal. We are in the control of our destiny. We are the driver's seat. You can go off the cliff. You can stay in the road. Or you can go to hit the mountain. So freeway say it has a four lanes. So if you stay between two and third, you are safe. You go on a fourth. If you have a flat tire, you might go hit the rail. If you're on the right-hand side, Gonna bump you're gonna go to clip. So we have to we have places to maneuver, right? But too much maneuver. So life is like that. For myself, I, I always use myself example. For a while, I was not taking care of myself. It was work, traveling. I went traveling, eating, whatever, and I didn't do it, a lot of exercise, and my weight went up. I was up to two hundred and eighty pounds. So wow. then, yeah. So then I had a, a high blood pressure. I ended up being in the middle of the beginning of those corona. I was in hospital with the high blood pressure. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. No, no it, 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 thank you. But it was a, that's why I'm saying that before. That. Maybe somebody is being like a, a right now being um, anxiety yeah, at home. It can work everyone. So what I did was, okay, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to turn around. I start exercising, going for long walks, slowly. I didn't want to hurt my knees. But, so start losing the weight and now i am 225 to 30 between that i lost about uh, 55 pounds in that's a months. lot that's yeah. a lot and i didn't force myself just a lot of walk-ins at the time i even like a phone calls i had i was walking at home so i used that one so and also i started watching my diet my sugar level and everything and cooking at home more attention about my cooking and also what was for me fun when i started losing people everybody was interested i started encouraging them to so i got more kick out of it happy to see the friends i i motivate them they do exercise they lose weight right now I, I can say over more than 20 people i know between average of 10 to 30 40 pounds they lost because of the we were talking so that makes me but the, the thing about the corona is um, it again brought that joy of the life family living together and cooking together being together understanding and that war around the space we had because we were selfish or eating together same food. Like used to be, oh, I don't want, I'm going to order telephone pizza come or oh, I'm going to order Chinese food. I'm going to order Persian food, everybody. But all days we had a one dish in the middle. We used to, unless you are allergic for something, they used to enjoy the food and conversation around the laughter. And uh, to be honest with you, a lot of good things happen. And um, in the, you know, but, all my find something makes you happy painting bicycle riding um any kind of art anything makes your heart happy again you cannot feel sorry for yourself you have a control you are the driver of your own destiny take it grip uh, grab on it and run, uh, drive it safely and that's what right now you see that at the beginning it was a little hard but right now people start like a first time in the uh, major news, ABC, uh, 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 CBS, BBC, 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 Iranian BBC want to me go on on their news talk about their food. Guess what? I didn't want to do fast. I show simple dish of the uh, dormaj. Dormaj basically, I told them leftover of the our uh, 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 bread towel that used to put the bread to keep it moist. Yes, crumble there crumble up the cheeses, feta cheese, we had it, and some butter and some herbs. They used to mix it together, dry, and some fresh water, and fold it, make it bite size, and eat it with tea, a snack. It was from not it's stuff that people, they throw away, they make it dishes, but it's fun too. So also I brought the memories from the past, and next, you know, I got bombarded message. Thank you very much to bring something that my grandpa used to make it. Now I am making it at home and enjoying it. So... 
a lot of things was going to be forgotten, but not because of this pandemic. It's coming back to us. It's we are coming back. Our rule. And it's great time for our culture to take advantage of this one. And um, all I can say, there's lots of stuff going on right now. I cannot talk about it because it's not premature to talk about it. There are lots of good news I have uh, for Iranian culture and the food. And we are working on it. It's going to be on a bigger scale in the for future, working on it behind the scene. And the one was that everybody knew that we started doing that culinary uh, actually part of unit, they get a credit from Stanford, which is right now we are working with another university. We can be in the same thing. And there's another stuff going on that, again, food parallel with the culture, culture with the food. You cannot take it. And hopefully we can get this message to the, this big festival uh, Iranian group. They do that so they can get it. And finally they can follow and make the food as their heart priorities. Chef Zare, I wanted to say thank you very much for donating us your time, for giving us this opportunity to talk to you. It was, it was my pleasure to be speaking to you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of myself, my, our audience, my co-hosts, I wanted to say we really appreciate you being here. Thank, thank you very much. Pleasure being and with you guys. Well, I hope we get the chance to meet each other. Thank you very much. And our dear audience, Thank you so much for following this conversation to the end. We hope that you enjoyed it. You, it was amazing. And see you next time. Take care. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram page, and share this video with your friends. Also, if you have extra time, please check out our other videos. Thank you and see you next time.